Welcome to Black Onyx. We're discussing the regulatory topic, the Financial Markets Act. With me is Tabala Shabalala, the Compliance Officer at EPSA CIB. Tabala, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. What is the purpose of the Financial Markets Act? The purpose of the Financial Markets Act is to replace what was used to be called the Securities Services Act and also to provide regulation for the financial markets, i.e. to regulate exchanges, to regulate members such as banks, brokers, as well as clearing houses, and also to provide provision for the prohibition of what is called insider trading and other related market abuse activities, and also to align South African legislation to international best practices. That's what the purpose of the Act is all about. Who administers the Financial Markets Act? And how do they do so? Who administers the Financial Markets Act is the body called the Financial, Sec uh, Financial Sector Conduct Authority, which was previously called the Financial Services Board, the FSB. And they administer the Act in terms of issuing guidance notes, circulars, as well as regulations, as well as conducting on-site inspection to all the members. And they've also given their powers to the Joint Spec Stock Exchange for the, for the exchange to conduct market abuse surveillances to all the members. In your own words, how do you define market abuse? In my own words, I would define market abuse as an activity where one person actually uses information which is not in the public domain to trade and to make profit for their own personal gain at the, as a, at the disadvantage of the general public who does not have that inside information. And also, in, it could be a person uh, publishing false information, deceptive information, or misleading information in order to influence the price of the security for his own personal gain. An, an example of insider trading would be, for example, where you find a director of the company knows that a company might be involved or might be merging with another company and therefore the share price would, would increase. And that person, because he's got inside information or information that others don't have by virtue of his office, then he goes and starts buying more of those securities with, the, with an intention that when the deal is concluded, the major deal is concluded, then he knows that the share price would go up and he starts selling. But he has bought them cheaper because he knew that the merger would happen and the share price would, would increase and then, then he would then start selling. But others in, in, in the public or in, 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 in the financial uh, uh, market did not have that information. So that would be one classic example of insider trading. Why is it important to refrain from market abuse? In market abuse on its own is a criminal offence. Somebody can go to jail. Also, the person involved in market abuse activities can be fined on their personal capacity and also it attracts bad reputational risk to those firms who have employed those Im uh, individuals that are impl implicated in the scandal. And also it's not good for the, for the whole uh, integrity of the financial markets. And also it affects investors' confidence into, into the market. So that is why uh, people must refrain from, 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 from market abuse because it's got far-reaching consequences. What are the offences, penalties and fines related to market abuse? In terms of the Financial Markets Act, there is three categories of offences. Firstly, there is insider trading. And secondly, there is prohibited uh, uh, trading practices. And, and thirdly, there is a publishing of false, deceptive and misleading statements. In terms of insider trading is where somebody actually trades based on information that others don't have. Prohibited tra uh, trading practices would be examples where somebody puts a buy or a sell order where there is no change in beneficial ownership. So it's one person who actually puts a buy and sell order to give an impression to the general public that actually there is a demand for, for, for a particular uh, a security whilst there is no such demand. Or somebody putting an order near the close of the market in order to influence the closing price of the security. You, you understand? So the, 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 the finance... The generally, the fine would be a, 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 a one million uh, if somebody is found to to to, to be uh, 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 is, file, is, is found of insider trading, or it could be a profit three times the profit that you have made or avoided by the acts that you have done. Does EPSA CIB have a policy in place that caters for market abuse? Yes, we do have several policies. 
Uh, but for the purpose of the interview, I'll stick to what we call the personal account trading policy, of which in terms of the policy, staff are required to disclose their outside business interest and their outside trading accounts to the bank, so as the bank can know that so-and-so has got an account with, a, with, 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 such a, with such a broker. And before a person can trade, a person is required to get what we call pre-trade approval or permission to, to trade. The purpose of getting a, a pre-trade approval is for the bank to actually check whether the security that you want to trade in or invest in, whether you've got inside information relating to that security. If you've got that information, then you would be declined to, to trade. If you don't, then you would be allowed to trade. But also what the bank normally does is that after each and every month, your staff is required to provide what you call broker statements, so as they can reconcile what is being traded on the broker statement with what you with, with the permissions that you have given, and also with all the deals that you've been involved in, in order to check whether you had insider information when you uh, inside information when you traded. In your opinion, how does market abuse affect your organisation and the financial services industry? In, in my opinion, market abuse affects the the uh, firstly from a firm perspective. It, it has, uh, an, it, it, it has a reputational damage to the firm. If it was found that some of our staff are involved in market abuse activities, it will attract negative uh, reputational uh, 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 risk to, 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 to the firm. And also to the bigger financial markets, uh, it, it's not good for, for, for the financial markets because it affects uh, markets integrity and also the, the, uh, the confidence that the investors have into the South African market. Does Absis CIB provide training on market abuse? Yeah, we do s provide several uh, uh, training in terms of market abuse because we are required to provide training in terms of the law. So one example of training or the format in which we provide training is by form of an online training where staff are required to go online and do their market abuse uh, uh, training. At the end of the training, they are required to, to do an assessment to test whether they've passed, uh, whether they've uh, attained knowledge and understood what they've done. And also we, what we do, we also do face-to-face -face training or classroom training where actually we train them on, on, on concepts of market abuse. For example, what is market abuse? Uh, examples of market abuse. A uh, fines that uh, 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 the firm, the individual concern can attract when they've committed market abuse. And we also went a step further to actually uh, make training quite fun, where we actually do what we called a theater training, where we employ uh, professional actors, we sit with them, we, we, we train them on compliance, and they play this uh, market uh, 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 abuse concepts in, in a form of a play. And then staff can sort of grasp all the, 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 the concepts of market abuse there. And after that training, then they are required to do, to do an assessment. Tabalo, thank you for sharing your knowledge and compliance. Thank you for having me. And thank you for tuning into Black Onyx. For more details, please visit our website.